Training opportunities are in high demand to help close skill gaps in the industry, but often it's challenging for businesses to sacrifice financial and human resources to send employees to educational opportunities despite the need to keep up with changing industry standards. Trey Fogarty, Director of Government Affairs for the National Emergency Number Association, explains why members and clients value the accessibility of on-demand online training. We're launching our online learning platform because our members consistently told us it was something they wanted and would value. Um, in today's world with hectic schedules and shrinking travel budgets, the ability to access educational content online and on demand is critical for the 911 profession. Many professionals require continuing education to maintain accreditation with their association. And online is often the only practical way in today's busy world to ensure members are keeping up to date. As Dr. Joyce Gilbert, CEO and President of the Association of Nutrition and Food Service Professionals explains, her members require 45 continuing hours to take the next step to become accredited, making in-class sessions nearly impossible. We've used multitudes of platforms because there's a continuing ed component that's also associated with their credential. So individuals that have set for the exam successfully and become CDMs, they'll actually need 45 continuing uh, hours over a three-year period. And so we actually supply online and also other products and services to meet those CE requirements through our organization. Many organizations are simply too thin on human resources to sacrifice staff for all-day or multi-day training sessions. The ability to learn the latest best practices while eating lunch or during brief periods of downtime can mean the difference in an organization's decision to participate in the training session. Nursing and caregivers, people that take care of vulnerable populations are committed to what they do, um, but there's not an overabundance of them. And so having people out of your building even for a day is a hardship for some facilities. So as we learned that webinars were a great way to provide education and to include more people, we started kind of upping the game as to what we would offer. We got more presenters on board. We, we got better topics, more topics. We started doing series so that we could take several weeks to offer a topic in, you know, in eight or 10 hours rather than just offering it for one week in two hours. Though offering a strictly online educational session sometimes isn't practical, if possible, it's a good idea to film the session and make it available online to serve as a refresher for your members. So the format of the education that we provide is to always try to do things that require intense in-person education, um, to have those uh, items filmed while we're doing that so that we can actually then move them out into video format later and, and if people could not make the session, they actually can uh, access it online. Um, and so they can do it 24-7 and it also is a refresher for people who went to the session to go back and pick up things that they didn't learn in the sessions themselves. How you provide online educational opportunities is going to depend on your industry and the needs of its members. There is no one-size-fits-all approach, but rather a combination of strategies. By making educational content available online, you save your members valuable human and financial resources, ensure best practices are consistent across the industry, provide content that could be referenced later on, and demonstrate remarkable forethought and value to your clients and members. 